everybody, this is Jared Davis from Jared Davis Outdoors coming to you today not from a hunting video, but I'm bringing to you today a DIY project. Just as promised, the Economy Silosock Snow Goose Decoy. We want to do this for a dollar or under per sock. That would bring it to right around $10 a dozen. That makes these uh, decoys that, that you have to have in such a great number uh, so much cheaper you can spend money on uh, a few nicer decoys save that money and just add these to your spread to give it a little bit more size a little bit more movement and uh, for me th this is the beginning moments of my spread I don't have a spread yet this is where it's all going to start for me so here are a few things that you are going to need first thing is going to be some house wrap uh, I believe this was about 20 bucks for this roll and it is uh, you know, it's kind of thin. It does have some markings on it that I will have to spray paint white whenever I go to painting all of my decoys. Next thing you're going to need is a 3 8 inch dowel that I cut to, I believe this is 16 inches. Uh, this is a 1 8 inch metal rod. You can go either way with the method that I'm going to show you for putting these together. Um, you will need a form of glue construction adhesive. In this case, it's something that my wife uses for a lot of her little DIY projects. Uh, this is E6000, and um, it's light to boot, so that'll work out well. And then I've got a Snow Goose decoy template that I actually, I just drew kind of one side of it out, folded it, and then cut on my line, and this is what I got. Um, you can add as much detail or as little detail as you want. In this case, I did this one really quick, just threw it together, and I even had to make a few changes on the neck, so as you see, I, I taped so Go ahead and uh, design that to your specs, to your likings. Uh, you can actually also order these off of uh, I believe eBay. I've seen some stencils uh, for painting, but it also comes in this format where you trace it on and then you paint your, your wing pattern uh, with the stencil portion. And then what you're going to need is some kind of plastic sheeting. I went into Hobby Lobby and I got this. I believe it said it's for quilting. And I uh, just told them I needed some kind of thick plastic backing. And this is what they gave me. Some guys are using the plastic banding that comes on boxes and packing materials. Um, I think that, that that particular material is a little bit thicker than this, so it may work. Uh, but for my sample piece that I had already built, um, that's what I've got here, and it holds the neck open quite well. So anyways, got that. It's for quilting Hobby Lobby. And then the last thing that you're going to need is an inexpensive uh, wiring nut, and uh, we're going to use this for the top piece. In this case, it's red. They do sell them in white, but these are the ones that I had lying around. So anyways, let's get to it. One of the first things that I want to do is I want to go ahead and I want to lay my pattern out right here. And I'm just going to run around that and trace it. This will be one full decoy. We've got them traced out. Let's get them cut. And then we will start the fun part. Okay guys, got my I got my two pieces cut out here. And um, now we're gonna have to go inside for a little bit of sewing. I just couldn't bring myself to ask my wife to sew these for me. Um, so, so, anyways, what I like to do um, is go ahead. If it's got writing on it like this, I'm gonna want to keep this on the outside whenever we go to sew. So I just kind of match these up, and let's take them in, and let's put them through the sewing machine really quick. Okay, so here we are inside. I'm going to go ahead and match these pieces up. I like to start my stitch. Um, right about here um, so I've got just a little bit of an opening for the flap whenever I go to fold that over a few times and I kind of have a little bit bigger opening this way so I'm going to start the stitch uh, right about here where it kind of starts to get bigger in the neck and um, if you don't know how to do this just ask your wife that's what I did and she showed me how it was done or told me how it was done Try to stay as close to the outside but as best you can. Okay, it's very important to note here um, that I am going to stop my stitch even with this right about here. So I want to go ahead and let the stitch go to right about there. 
and then I'm done and it's sewn together. So for the next step, uh, we just sewn this together. We are going to stick our hand in the inside, grab at the very back, and pinch and pull it through. So you're going to be turning the bag that you just created completely inside out. Then you will have a bag without any kind of seam or any kind of stitching. There we go. We got this profile bag. Of course, like I said, it is going to have to be painted. Some of the green stuff there showed through. The writing on the on the, the house wrap showed through. So, anyways, let's go ahead. We're going to lay that flat. Then what we want to do is take uh, our plastic here, and if you've got the banding, you'll omit this step, obviously. But I've gone gone ahead and marked this in three quarter inch sections, and then I'm just going to cut it out. So now that I have my three quarter inch uh, piece of plastic here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of go ahead and make a little bit of a circle. I'm going to line this up with my first gap, get a little bit closer to the camera here. I'm going to take this piece of plastic, line it up with that edge, and then I'm just going to kind of staple it in place. But I'm going to want to leave enough to staples. I kind of want to open this up like it would be if that we're sitting on the stake right then. And I'm just gonna put staples in it as I go around. And mind you, it will overlap just a little bit, but that's no big deal. And you just kind of give it a little bit of extra stability where it overlaps, no big deal. That kind of, I'm gonna make it just a little bit wider than the actual hole. Put that staple in there. And then what I want to do is I'm going to take and I'm just going to fold it down. What I've got is I folded it all the way down over the band and now the plastic is no longer exposed. I'm going to go ahead and fold it one more time. And then what you can do is you can actually take and put more staples in it or you can go run just a couple of seams through it, which is what I'll do here in a moment. Run maybe one or two seams on, on the bottom and then on the top. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this spare piece board because I don't wanna go in screwing my work surface here. I'm gonna lay this flat, kind of iron the edges back out as it was whenever we sewed it together. And then I'm just gonna kind of you can measure it. In this case, I'm just going to kind of pick center, a center point, and I'm going to take my drill, and this is an eighth inch drill bit on here, and I'm just going to drill straight through the center where I got through that. So I got through that plastic really well. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my wooden dowel, take this wooden dowel, and this is going to be my bottom, this is going to be my top, because obviously I don't have to put as much spray paint on that side and I've actually sharpened both ends of this dowel uh, on my belt sander. One will go on the ground, one goes in the decoy, and then I just kind of twist it and make that hole open up a little bit. And once I have that all the way through, just like that, I'm going to take this, I'm going to take this electrical nut, wiring nut, and then I'm going to take some of this glue. So I'm going to take and dab just a little bit of glue on the end of this. And what is actually going to happen, it actually it happens on uh, metal or the wood, is it kind of puts a thread. It taps out the end of that dowel or that piece of metal. So we're just going to take and we're going to slip that over. And we're just going to twist until it gets tight. And that dude's on there. I mean, you can pull, do whatever. It's on there. And then we're just going to spread this out. And it's open, as you can see. Give it a little bit of, of air, a little wind through it. Another thing that I do like to do whenever I kind of put my finishing touches on my stuff, I take just a little bit more glue and put it all around the base where that wire nut is. Kind of on the dowel. And 
cactus stuff that gets everywhere. And then we'll just press that firmly into it. And it'll hold on there and be good. We'll have to give it a little bit of a training. We'll have to still paint it and stuff. But this is just the basic economy snow sock design. But this is the basic economy snow sock. And let's kind of look at a price analysis here. Um, and I went ahead and figured out how many I could get out of each of the products that I bought. Um, now, and actually, if you find somebody that is building a house or has already built a house, typically they have this stuff left over. It's about a hundred bucks for a 10 foot by a hundred foot roll of it. And uh, typically they're gonna have it left over. I'm actually, I'm waiting to get some now. So honestly, this, you know, it, it, it can be to where you don't even have a cost in this. But this is about 20 bucks. They said it's a three foot by 100 foot. It's about 20 bucks. So, anyways, for my um, for, for the plastic sheeting, the rings. Once again, you can use the box, uh, the, the the packing, the shipping stuff, the shipping straps. But I went ahead and bought it. So everything that I bought about the plastic that was about 10 cents a piece that I'm using. Uh, my house wrap it comes out to actually be about 45 cents. The most expensive part of the decoy. My rods came down to about 26 cents a piece. I'm only getting three rods uh, or three stakes per rod and those are 78 cents a piece. And then uh, I've got my um, my wiring nut. Those come up to be about six cents a piece. You can buy this stuff in bulk and probably get it a lot cheaper. But as is, we're sitting at 78 cents uh, per sock. So fairly cheap. Um, I mean, it's still going to be somewhat expensive to, to put a thousand of them out there, but I'm not going to be nearly as much as what I would be if I were going and buying those straight from the store to fill out an entire spread. Now, I'm not saying um, do an entire spread out of these because I don't really know how effective it's going to be. It looks just like the, the economy socks that I've seen, um, but I'm actually going to go ahead and purchase some. Uh, through Hero Decoys. If you haven't already checked them out, go check them out online. Awesome stuff. Uh, they do more than decoys. They have a few other things. Uh, the Hero products, you want to look into that. So anyways, guys, that about wraps this video up. 78 cents a pop. Hope this helped you a ton and you can add some extra movement for a budget price into your snow goose spread. Thanks for watching this video on Jared Davis Outdoors. We'll see you next time.